Miguel Angel Lopez, Egan Bernal, Remco Evenepoel, and Ivo Pipo Gana go head to head on a high altitude climb in Argentina last night. 150k stage, breakaway got like a five minute gap, I think. Movistar were pacing for Ana Rubio, who the clumbing on their team, as well as Ineos helping them out. Your man says, yep, 515 gap. Who have we got here? For GC, got oh, Richese, but he's not here for GC. Sergio Aguita is Bora's leader, Colombian national champion. It's a shallow climb they're about to do, really long, just like a huge, long climb, averaging like 4%, with really no steep sections. So if it came to a sprint, Aguita would be dangerous. Danny Martinez is here, but didn't look like he was in top shape. Pippo Ganna's done really well on this climb before. In previous years, it seems to suit him. Bernal's here, but breakaway started to attack each other. It was the first part of the climb, then like a flat section, then it goes back up again. And when the last part with 15 k to go started, Medellin just slapped it for Miguel Angel Lopez, who's riding for that team. Half the bunch is on, I think, specialized because they like sponsor the event and, and Medellin are on that bike. And Lopez, he was just always on the radio, just barking out orders. I'm not sure if there was a left to right crosswind as they faced the road, and that's why they moved across the other side of the road to put people in the gutter. But yeah, you, you gotta you gotta pace really hard on this climb. And you see, yeah, he, he's motioning his team to give him better draft. You you got to pace really hard when it is you know at least four and a half five percent to actually be able to create gaps in the end and yeah the break was getting shattered Remco's moved up though at this point he had been a bit further back he's now moved into fifth wheel with Lampard and I think Jan Hirt there but Jan Hirt wasn't really able to help him at all today and Medellin they got Oscar Sevilla the the veteran and they're getting a lovely, lovely draft from the motos as well on this climb. You can't even see that it's a climb. Remco attacks with 98 k's to go. Pretty much self-sabotage, really. <laughs> like, unless he's in, I don't know, he's even in his world to form, frankly. With Medellin, they got, they're, they're pacing full gas with Lopez in the wheel on 3 4%, and it levels off afterwards. And then Ineos start pacing as well with Martinez, with you know Simmons, I think, in fifth wheel for Trek. You just cannot stay away. So I think he sat out there, Remco, for about 2Ks, and he saw the group was chasing him. Look, look how flat it is here, and he just basically lets the group come back to him. But he caused the race to be split with the acceleration of Medellin and Ineos chasing behind, and Really, Lopez should have been the favorite for this state. He attacks straight away as Remco's caught. He is so good to high altitude, so good on one-hour climbs, has been for five, six years plus uh, on sort of one-hour climbing efforts, especially on shallow gradients. He, he seems to be really, really good on 4 5%. He can stay away and... I don't know whether he's just really has like a low CDA when he's climbing um, and he's in the drops right now, but he's really good on those sort of efforts and he, he puts everyone in the bin right now. Quinn, Quinn Simmons is dropped. Remco's dropped on the Lopez acceleration. He's behind in that second group on the road. Rubio's been left there. He's the Movistar rider on Aguita's wheel. Gunner's just sort of, you can see he's really having to work to stay third wheel in the draft as they catch uh, the breakaway. And Aguita goes to front, starts pushing. Not sure if that was wise. I mean, he's got the best sprint probably of this group, assuming that Ghana will be cooked at the end of the climb. So he starts pushing, uh, even though he's on the same time as Miguel Angel Lopez, and then Lopez attacks again with 6.1Ks to go. So he attacked, this is his second attack, his last one when he goes solo, not really an attack, and they're just straight up sprinting on this false flat. And it's interesting if... Yeah, false flat, can it be used as more of a weapon on, on longer climbs when it's part of longer climbs, when riders are isolated? Bernal, Bernal's actually, I mean, Ghana's not isolated. Bernal was doing a really good job. It's probably the the longest I've seen him since his crash, sort of actively ta not taking part in the race, but like making a difference when the race is really on at the end. Of course, at Deutschland Tour, he was like, you know, pacing on the flat early, but this is different. He's pulling Gana back to Miguel Angel Lopez, who rips that gap open now. And he's got to take time on Gana on GC and eventually drops Igita going clear with 5Ks to go. So Lopez terminated his contract, well, Stana terminated his contract. Uh, to his surprise, it seemed, at the end of last year. Couldn't find a team, even a pro Conti team, racing in Europe 
and he's riding away on the Queen stage, Alto del Colorado, in Vuelta a San Juan after Medellin picked him up. So Bernal, as you can see, pacing gun is like the odd one out, <laughs> but three three sub-60 kilo Colombians. But he's the one that goes clear afterwards. And the other interesting part of this finish is Ghana definitely adopts uh, an, an, an illegal position, or at least a position that has merited disqualification or sanction by the UCR before. Now, if someone does this in a World Tour race in Europe, this year, they are going to get disqualified or penalized in some way because, yeah, Richardson did this when he was on Alps and not even he was still touching the levers and he got disqualified from a race. So, yeah, be keen to hear or see what happens with that. But from what I can see, there's no sanction. Obviously, with Ghana trying to adopt that position, you can see everyone's in the big chain ring. They're doing like 30 kph plus. It's just such an aero climb. But yeah, Lopez goes clear, but now still able to mark Igita. Like, he was still in group two, only 38 seconds he'd finished behind Lopez, who was absolutely stomping. You know, this is his A target, wanting to prove a point. This is a really big, important race. Maybe the biggest race his team does this year, and he wins. Wins easily on not even that hard a climb. Aldo del Colorado, 30 seconds out of Ghana. And about 38 seconds ahead of Iguita, obviously cleaning up Rubio and Bernal in the sprint behind. But Varus Quickstepper, where's Remco? He was over a minute behind. I mean, I don't think he did himself any favors with that attack. And then he lost the draft when Lopez immediately countered afterwards. But maybe he's not, probably not in his best shape in his welter shape either. He finished a minute and nine seconds behind Lopez, who goes into the GC lead just seven seconds ahead of Ghana. Will he be able to hold on? Depends if Gano takes bonus seconds in the next stage or so. And in the interview afterwards, he didn't really... I was hoping you said something spicy, but from what I could see, he just thanked the team and said, you know, good time to attack and all that. He, he didn't really say anything really spicy. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Lopez, still one of the best high-altitude climbers in the world on his day. Does that mean a World Tour team or Pro Conti team is going to give him a contract? I very much doubt it, but who knows? Stranger things have happened in cycling. Until the next one, ciao.